you know, you're hitting a really important quarter, the holiday quarter, and supply chains are just woeful. How are you managing to navigate it as best you can? Yeah, and thanks for having me, Caroline. It, you know, it's been something we've been battling really for a year, uh, right? And that's why I'm so proud and grateful of the way the team has performed to deliver the kind of growth we reported yesterday, mm. coming in ahead of expectations and 30% uh, revenue growth, 150% EBITDA growth. So just an outstanding year. But you're right, we were very transparent about the fact that we have a ton of demand right now. I think the consumer is extremely strong um, and it's gonna be challenging in this quarter. Um, and that is all the supply chain side of things. I mean, Ed just hit it. You know, we've had to look at how we replace some of those chips that we have in our products. And we have dozens of components and a lot have been short just given the supply, the industry-wide supply chain crunch. And so you look at putting you know different ch chips in, working with other suppliers, uh, going out in the open market and buying chips from others. Um, so a whole bunch of different things that we're doing to try and mitigate it. But nonetheless, we're left in a situation where uh, the December quarter uh, is going to be a challenging one. And then we expect it to get better um, mm -hmm. as the year uh, ultimately proceeds. Longer term, have you been thinking, how would you make of the onshoring of chip making, chip design? I mean, Apple going as far as to make their own chips, but then Ford looking at global foundries and wanting to bring the chip making into the United States. Is there, are they the sort of solutions you've been looking at, more longer term perspective? Yeah, definitely engaging with even more partners. I mean, it, being a smaller company than you know a GM or an Apple, we've obviously had to partner with a lot more uh, companies to really uh, get to where we are today. But it, we are definitely looking at where where we can um, make our supply chain more resilient, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, it was only a year ago we also diversified from China to Malaysia as well. So we have both China and Malaysia up and running. Um, and then we're looking at some of those onshore options over time as some of our partners, right, our manufacturing partners move onshore. But look, we've been, as an industry, really uh, building up the supply chain and all of that in Asia for 30 years, right? Mm -hmm. And so a lot of that, a lot of the component suppliers, not just the manufacturers, um, you know, that, that's a big, big task to bring back onshore. But I do think you will see um, that happened as part of building more resilient supply chains. And the pandemic's taught the industry a lot, right, in terms mm -hmm. of needing to have that resilience and that localization, quite frankly. How do you expect the holidays will look and feel to the end consumer? Is it going to be that they walk into a store and there just aren't the sound bars of yours that we're desperate to buy? Is it that they will just arrive a little bit late? How are you thinking that you're going to navigate the next few months? Uh, I'd say consumers should get out there and order today. Um, you can see even on our website or through our partners, uh, like a Best Buy or a Costco, um, it depends on the product uh, that's mm -hmm. out there. Uh, sometimes you'll be able to get it right away. Sometimes you'll be waiting a few weeks. Um, so I think more and more consumers are getting the message though and probably getting out there sooner. We, we have a tremendous backlog right now. And the good news is that throughout the year, consumers have been sticking with us. I think Sonos is more of a considered purchase. Mm -hmm. um, so we've been watching very carefully like cancellation rates from both our consumers and then as well, um, our retailers and channel partners. And uh, you know we're in the enviable position where um, those cancellation rates have remained very, very low and consistent throughout the year. And so we expect any demand that doesn't get fulfilled in this December quarter to be fulfilled um, through the rest of 2022. Uh, we're obviously watching that very closely. Let's talk about partners and previous partnerships that have turned sour. Of course, we do know that you've sued Google. There's talk potentially that you might look at Amazon as well. How is that all progressing from your perspective? Yeah, and, and to be clear, Google's still a partner. Um, mm. We support YouTube Music. We work with them on the Google Voice Assistant. And um, so we continue to work with them. Uh, I think that's part of existing in the uh, tech industry these yes. days, right, is the partnership and then as well. Uh, sometimes issues that you just can't resolve, um, you know, through the regular negotiations. And so um, we're very confident. We had a very positive uh, ruling in August from the ITC. Uh, and tomorrow uh, we should get an update from the ITC on the next step um, in that procedure. But it's definitely something that uh, we're very confident in. Um, we invented the category uh, and we believe that, you know, really we need to stand up for all uh, inventors uh, and smaller companies in the face of anyone trying to trample on our intellectual property rights. That's really interesting that you're able to sort of disassociate. I mean, I know that frenemies is kind of the way it goes. We look at the relationship between chip makers and Apple and the things in the past. But what, how do you still have a good working relationship with the likes of Google when it does seem to have got relatively personal? 
Yeah, it's, you know, I think it's uh, mutually beneficial at the end of the day. And mm. so uh, some, of the, some of those things, uh, they want to be in uh, the homes that Sonos is in uh, today. And we want to be able to offer customers all of the services that are out there. That's one of our strengths. Um, you know, we're not going to try to lock you into one ecosystem as some of the big tech players will. Uh, so we try to offer all of that choice. So it makes sense for us and it makes sense for them because they want to be in all of the very attractive homes that uh, we're now in 12.6 million of. Mm. Uh, what about the strategy going forward for voice assistants? To build your own partner? What, where, where does it go? Yeah, I think it's a combination. You know, we uh, acquired uh, a company around voice, uh, you know, in the past. And so we think there's some really interesting opportunities there. Um, we also want to support uh, what's happening in the industry. So we've supported and we were the first to support both uh, Amazon's Alexa and then Google's Assistant. And we think at the end of the day, the most important thing is a great experience. And behind the scenes on that is making sure customers get choice of whatever they want to use. You know, we do not think it's the right thing to lock people into a particular ecosystem or force them to choose one. And so we remain the standard when it comes to being open to all alternatives. On the legal front, are you joining the antitrust suits with the AG, state AGs, with the DOJ at all? Yeah, I, I testified in front of the Congressional Committee last year. Um, certainly, they ask us a lot of questions in terms of our experience. Um, I do think I've been in the tech industry for 23 years. This is the most attention I've seen on this. So <laughs> we've heard it from Europe. Uh, we've heard it from uh, the American authorities as well, Canada, Australia. So there's a lot of interest in it right now. Um, and certainly, um, we want to cooperate because we believe in a world where you know there can be more startups and more innovative companies. Um, and they shouldn't, you know, just have, uh, you know, bigger players copy what they're doing and uh, try and, mm. you know, trample their intellectual property rights. And you don't want legal issues to bog you down in your innovation. One, one thing you're really excited about in terms of your next innovation, next product. Oh, well, uh, you know, our roadmap is exciting. We always do two, at least two new products every year. Um, we just recently brought out our new Beam Generation 2 soundbar. Uh, and with this huge trend uh, I've been talking a lot about called Hollywood at Home, uh, we just think we have a huge tailwind behind that. And, uh, you know, and so we're super excited about a lot of new products we have coming in 2022 and beyond. We also announced yesterday that we're ahead of our targets for 2024. So we feel really good about where we are today.